Jesus! Oh. Right behind me thinks I'm an absolute nutter. <laughs> Do you have a nice array of Nissan Skylines here today? <laughs> <laughs> it's hot, it's hot. <laughs> Good morning, you absolute lovelies. Welcome back to the Monkey London YouTube channel. As you can see today, I am sitting in a rather fine Citroen Saxo VTR. <laughs> Second, I seem to be missing something. Monkey London carbon glasses. Better. I'm actually off to a track day at Brands Hatch with Open Track tomorrow, Mr. Dave Woodall, absolute legend. Before the track day, I thought I'd kind of just introduce the little Saxo to you guys and show you what she's all about. I've always wanted a Citroen Saxo. Back in the day, these really were the king of the cruises, but back in the day, the insurance premiums were very expensive. It's not really until now, a lot of us could have kind of afford these cars. Three, two, one, go. Better. Yeah. 60, and a junction. These little Saxos absolutely rip. This is actually a VTR, they did a VTR and a VTS. This is an eight valve, it's got 100 horsepower, and I believe the VTS was 16 valve and had 120 horsepower. So about 20 horsepower more, a little bit more peppy, it kind of sung a bit more into the rev range. Um, but these VTRs are kind of famous for having a lot of torque low down. This is actually a later Citroen Sax. So they did a Mark 1 and this is a Mark 2 2003. It's only covered 133,000 miles. So you think the car's nearly 20 years old. It's actually quite low mileage for the age of the car. Back in the day, they made a huge amount of these Saxos. Quite a few of them were bitten by the Max Power Bug. And they were kind of modified body kits, wheels, stereos. Readers of Britain's best-selling car magazine and the modifier's bible, Max Power, have voted the Citroen Saxo their favourite hot hatch. So, just what is it about this modest French fancy? I chose the Citroen Saxo because uh, it was my, basically my first car, and when I was 17 at the time, um, they were doing a two-year free insurance policy. It's brilliant to drive, it's great fun. These chaps may have been lured by cheap insurance and nifty handling, but what keeps them mad about their Saxo is the fact that they can change them beyond recognition. In the world of Max Saxos, size matters. A lot of them were crashed as well. Obviously, they were very popular with the younger generations. Insurance wasn't too crazy on these things, and a lot of them did unfortunately get wrapped around lampposts. The ones that did survive actually do make quite a cost-effective little car these days. I was kind of looking at eBay the other day at the 106 GTI prices and they're like sort of six to ten grand, whereas you can still, relatively speaking, pick one of these up for about two to four grand, depending on the condition. So they do make a really cost-effective hot hatch. Most importantly, you can really use the power as well. I know a lot of these cars now have like five, six hundred horsepower, some of these crazy electric cars over over a thousand horsepower but can you really use that power and how easy is it to use the power? This is quite a nice sort of dailyable track day example. It's been set up for a, a track day, but I mean, it's still got interior, it's still got door cards, it's still got a nice dash. So you don't kind of feel like you're super stripped out in here. It's been quite tastefully enhanced this car for a track day. You've got a safety devices, um, black roll cage with nice padding on it. You've got Cobra bucket seats, racing harnesses, it's got a flop dash, which gives it a really sort of nice appearance. Little cheeky Momo steering wheel.
literally rips. The way these things handle with the rear torsion bar set up, they're quite literally next level. This does have Bilstein suspension all round and a few little bushes and a few things done to the lower arms as well. Um, but this car literally sticks to the ground. It's on Cyclone alloy wheels, which I believe were the, from the 306, and it's got 808 tires all round, so plenty of grip in the rubber department. Nothing competes, I'm sorry, I've driven such a huge amount of cars, but nothing competes with these little low powered hot hatches. They are absolutely savage, really can't tell you that enough. Brakes have also been upgraded on the front, we've got a 206 GTI uh, front caliper with an upgraded disc and an upgraded pad. On the back we've got stock discs, stock calipers and a upgraded brake pad. It's not overly loud as well. I'll, I'll give it a couple of little revs as we're moving in this slow traffic so you guys can kind of hear what it sounds like. The guy behind me thinks I'm an absolute nutter. <laughs> Engine wise, it's got a two inch straight through exhaust with a DCAT as well. There's a Kent cam inside the head, which is pretty sick. Gives it a slightly more lumpy idle. It's got things like a panel filter and a chipped ECU just to try and squeeze a couple of extra ponies out of the motor. These cars in stock form were really, really quick back in the day. And once you add these few little mods and, and the, the better tires and the better suspension, they really do start to come alive. I know a huge amount of you guys in the audience used to own cars like this and things like Peugeot 106 uh, rallies and 106 GTIs. If you've ever had a little hot hatch like this, feel free to put a comment down below. It'd be great to kind of see how many of you guys have owned these cars in the past? I've actually never owned a Citroen Saxo purely because I couldn't afford the insurance back in the day. I did have a 106 Rally, um, which is also an 8 valve, but it's only a 1.3. These are a 1.6, a slightly bigger capacity motor. <laughs> ML fan in the house. These cars literally make you drive like an absolute nutcase. guys have been saying in the comment section that you've been missing Mr. Scouse so I thought I'd come up here we all know he absolutely adores French cars so I thought I'd bring this French beauty up to him and show him what it's all about extremely gorgeous ML sunglasses coming to a website near you very soon Jamie K <laughs> quick little look at the engine bearing we've got a nice little 421 manifold which I forgot to mention in the video that's your panel filter there and you've got a little air intake which kind of goes down into the wing it's actually got stock discs I thought it had uprated discs but it's got 206 GTI front calipers with a stock disc and an aftermarket pad these are the cyclone wheels well, like I said before I think these came on the 306 diesel turbos Yokohama Advan tires 1955015 all the way round. On the back, like I mentioned, stock rear calipers, stock disc, and just an aftermarket pad. If we look at the back, you can just about see the Bilstein suspension on the rear. It's got an aftermarket anti roll bar as well. And the rear axle on this car was also rebuilt about four months ago, which is quite a common problem on these. It's all been rebuilt, so it's nice and fresh. Two inch P shoes are coming out the back. Still got some Alpine speakers in there and a little Pioneer stereo as well, just in case you want to make a little bit of noise and do a cheeky little boogie. Safety devices, roll cages are really, really nice bits of kit. And they've also got the, um, the padding on there as well, just to kind of protect your limbs when you're getting in and out of the car. Cobra bucket seats, got one on the passenger side, one on the driver's side. 
with these nice trough harnesses. Still got the factory sunroof. All of the gubbins to open the sunroof has been removed, but the factory glass is still in place. Little Momo steering wheel, like I was telling you guys before, probably about sort of 260, 280 mil, pretty small, and a nice flop dash as well. Can you fit in this thing? Could you all like seven foot tall? Just about. Just about. Simon! Hello! Everyone says they've been missing you on the channel. I'm a very missable person. You are. You, I said you're the world's sexiest ginger. So we need to kind of I get mean, you back. Me, Ed Sheeran, and Harry. You know, <laughs> we've got a little thing going on. Welcome back. How and you I've doing? got to do the standard cuts and performance. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm good. How are you now that I've brought a French card down? <laughs> <laughs> Citroën Saxo? <laughs> Yay or nay? I mean, I'm sure it's good fun. Yeah, it's sick, man. Definitely. And I must say, as well, cast of performance, you have a nice array of Nissan Skylines here today. So R34 GTT. Yep. With some big brakes on it. Yeah. We've got a ER34. ER34. Well, look at the wrap as well, guys. Oh my God, absolutely gorgeous, Mr. Violent Diffin. But make sure you follow Mr. Craig. He is the guy responsible for making this car look absolutely. Fantastic. Out of 10. Seven. I'll take that. Biggest French lover, out of 10. 12. 12. I'm gonna give it a firm 20 out of 10 because it's a Citroen Saxo and it's sick. Why don't we just take it down the road for two minutes see what it, so you can see what it drives like. Uh, no. <laughs> right, there's loads of space in the back, scouts. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're kind of back to our youth yeah. driving this. I feel like we're going to college or something. Uh, Just going to have a smoke instead of going to college. Yeah. That's generally what happened back in the day. <laughs> so have you ever owned a Saxo? Not a Saxo, but I had uh, a Series 2. Uh, 106 Rally with the GTI engine, so the 16 valve engine in it. Oh, so basically the same head as what you get in like the VTS? Uh, this yeah. is an 8 valve head and the VTS had a 16 valve head. Yeah, something like that. I remember once I was chasing a friend in a, at the time he had a new, new Clio Sport. I was chasing him around, I got a bit of understeer coming into a roundabout, clipped the kerb, went up on two wheels, <laughs> come back down, went sideways and then brushed the front of this roundabout. And, oh oh mate, yeah. man, they were quite hairy cars. Aren't they? You, had to have some, yeah. you had to have some balls to really kind of pedal them hard <laughs> yeah. to combat that lift off oversteer. Right, right check. Test. We're going straight. Has it got abs? No abs. What? <laughs> to go sideways Fuck that. me, man. <laughs> this is like a skid machine when you're braking. And it's not very loud as well. It's not kind of too droning. I mean, give it give it a couple of little revs so they can hear. Not that bad, is it? It's quite, quite raspy, actually. And also important to bear that in mind for track days because most of them have a 97. Most of the time have a 97 decibel limit. Um, so you do need to make sure that your track car, when you do go there, isn't too loud. It's got to pass the noise tests or noise regulations before you go out on track. <laughs> yeah, boy! Look at me, you're just got in it, Jamie! Jesus, you animal! Use all the power. But it's definitely got enough grunt for a track day. Yeah. Be interesting to see what it's like on the straights and stuff with the more powerful cars. I think on the bends and the brakes, we should be all right. It's just the straights, really, isn't it? It's fast downhill, isn't it? Woo! <laughs> 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 you go sideways, man. Fuck me, man. <laughs> Ta-da! At 10 now. Gave it a seven before. Now you've driven it. Enough. Yeah, look at that. It's gone up a point and a half just from driving it. <laughs> that shows you the magic of the Saxo. Scousey, thank you, for, thank you for reappearing on the channel. I think hopefully everyone is happy now in the comment section that we have Mr. Scousey back on the channel. Fist bump, Jamie K. I'll see you tomorrow for some death-defying action. Love you guys very much. See you tomorrow.